Hi, Jaden. So today I'm going to be reading for you and my friends from ACG at my school because everyone's stuck at home. ACG is pretty much preschool, so they're all really your age. Hi, everyone at Child's Garden. It's Madison here. Can't wait to see you again. So the story I'm going to be reading is stories from India. And inside this book, there are lots of stories from India. My favorite one is called Ten Fools, and that's what I'll be reading today. As emperor, I only ever meet wise and educated men, complained Akbar to Burbal, his trusted advisor. I'm tired of meeting clever men, Burbal. I want you to show me ten of the biggest fools in my kingdom. I'll give you a month to find them. Oh, I'm sure I won't need a month, sire, replied Burbal, and he set off at once. An emperor's orders, no matter how silly, must be obeyed. Right outside the palace gates, Burbal met a man riding on a horse and trying to bounce a huge <sighs> and trying to bounce a huge bundle of firewood on top of his head. Why don't you put the firewood behind you on the saddle? Burbal asked. The weight of the firewood, as well as my own, would be too much for my poor horse, said the man, so I'm carrying the firewood myself. Burbal nodded. Come with me, he said with a twinkle in his eye. The emperor wants to meet you. A little further along the road, Burbal saw a man lying in a ditch with his arms in the air. Help, shouted the man. Burbal went to help him up. Not my arms, don't touch my arms, screeched the man. Why ever not, asked Burbal, hauling him by the waist. My wife has sent me out to buy a pot, the man exclaimed. She wants one this size. No bigger, no smaller. I was just on my way to buy one when I fell into the ditch. I couldn't get up without moving my arms, but if I move them, I'll never remember the size of the pot I'm supposed to buy. I see, said Burbal, swallowing a smile. You'd better come with me. The emperor wants to meet you. Burbal and the two men walked on. Before long, they saw a man running as fast as his legs would carry him. He tore right up to them and bumped into Burbal. Sorry, he gasped. What's the hurry? asked Burbal. I was trying to find out how far the sound of my voice carries, panted the man. So I shouted as loudly as I could, and then I chased after it. Perhaps you could try again another day, suggested Burbal. Why don't you come with me? I think the ep emperor wants to meet you. They walked on until they came to a park. There, they found two men in the middle of a fierce argument. What are you fighting about? Burbal asked. We were both praying, explained the first man, and I prayed that I would be given a buffalo. Right, nodded Burbal. It sounded sensible enough so far. And then my so-called friend here, continued the first man, started praying for a tiger. It's a strange thing to pray for, I admit, but why are you fighting, said Burbal. Isn't it obvious, shouted the first man, his tiger is going to eat my buffalo. Yes, grinned the second man, it is. You have to make it stop, yelled the first, lunging furiously at his friend. Why should I? C crowd? Crowed? Crowed the second man. It's hungry. Burbal shook his head in disbelief. Will you stop fighting for a while and come with me? He said. I think the emperor wants to meet both of you. Just then, another man walked up to them with a pot of oil bounced carefully on his head. You must be crazy to take them seriously, he said. They've been fighting about it since the crack of dawn. No word of a lie. If I'm telling a lie, may my blood be spilled like the oil in this pot. And to show what he meant, the man threw the oil he'd been carrying all over the ground. Oh no, he cried forlornly as his precious oil sank into dust. Oh dear, bad luck, said Burbal. Come with me. The emperor wants to meet you. By this time, the sun was setting and Burbal... By this time, the sun was setting and Burbal started walking back to the palace, with the fools following behind. As they approached the palace, Have you lost something? asked Burbal, bending down to help him look. 
Yes, I lost a ring. Over there, said the man, pointing to some bushes on the other side of the road. Why aren't you looking for it over there, then? asked Burbell, looking baffled. Because the light's better over here, replied the man. Perhaps tomorrow will bring you better luck, Burbell smiled. Why don't you come with me? I think the emperor wants to meet you. In front of the palace gates, another man was digging hole after hole in the sand. Did you bury something here? Burbell asked him. Yes, some pieces of gold, said the man. They're here somewhere, but I can't find them. Didn't you mark the place where you buried them? Asked Burbell. I didn't need to, said the man. There was a nice fluffy cloud right overhead, marking the spot, but it seems to have gone now. Well, who would have thought it? said Burbell, looking sympathetic. You'd better come and meet the emperor, he said. And he led all eight man men through the palace gates. That evening, the entire court gathered to see whether Burbell had succeeded in his task. Burbell introduced his eight fools, telling their stories one by one. The emperor laughed until he cried. They shall each have a bag of gold for coming to see me, he said, wiping his tears from his eyes. But Burbell, he continued, there are only eight fools here. I asked you to find ten. There are ten fools here, sire, replied Burbell. Then where are the other two? Then where are the other two, demanded the emperor, looking around the courtroom. One is sitting in the emperor's throne, and one is standing right in front of it, said Burbell with a bow. Everyone in the courtroom gasped as Akbar's face turned to thunder. Nobody called him a fool and got away with it. Explain yourself, he said, glowering. Glowering. If you'll forgive me, sire, said Burbell, you and I are the biggest fools of all. You for setting such a ridiculous task and me for carrying it out. There was a dangerous silence, but suddenly, to everyone's relief, the emperor burst out laughing. <laughs> Very good, Burbell, he said. You too shall have a big bag of gold for your pains. But as far as I'm concerned, you're priceless. Bye, Jaden and everyone in ACG.